Volkswagen, one of the great landmarks in motoring history. Today it is the biggest car firm in Europe and of course the creator of the Beetle, the best-selling car of all time, with production at 21 million plus and counting. Yeah, Volkswagen, without doubt one of the great British achievements. You thought I said British, didn't you? Well, you're right, I did. But before you dash off a letter to Anne Robinson, just wait. Because if it wasn't for a small group of British soldiers at the end of World War II, the Beetle and all this would never have existed. The Beetle was conceived by Ferry Porsche and shown to a delighted Adolf Hitler at the 1938 Berlin Motor Show. He immediately wanted to give it the snappy title of the Strength Through Joy car. Within a year, a giant factory to produce the Beetle had been built in the town of Wolfsburg and Hitler's dream of a people's car was about to become a reality. But unfortunately, he got ideas above his station and started World War II, and the giant plant switched to making military equipment. The Volkswagen story almost ended there, because in 1945, the conquering allies declared that all military factories, including Wolfsburg, should be destroyed. Fortunately, a group of British soldiers, including Major Ivan Hurst, found a lone beetle in the corner. One officer had, by chance, seen the, uh, the Volkswagen when it was introduced to the public at the motor show in Berlin just before the war. And he had the bright idea that if we, that is the British, could get the factory into operation, it would provide the light transportation that the army and military government required for, for running the British zone of Germany. The Americans said, oh, that's a good idea, we'll have them too, and the French also had them. Uh, an order was placed on the factory initially for 20,000 cars, and um, there was a stay of execution. The people I've talked to in Wolfsburg who were there at the time have great respect for Ivan Hurst and the British team. I think because they recognised that they were there um, working on their behalf and that they had the interests of the workforce at heart. With the Major, Hurst, uh, Major Hurst was held in very yeah, high regard no, and he still is very much respected by the older people at Wolfsburg. Because he was the one who prevented the factory from being demolished. In the factory itself, the uh, conditions were, uh, were very grim. In the press shop, for instance, the roof was off, and we had to uh, fling tarpaulins over each press on uh, wooden poles to keep the snow off. The water was running down the walls, through the ceiling, and through the floors into the cellar. Everywhere we stood, there were puddles, mud, debris from the roof. It was a mess. With just about everything in short supply, the British and the Germans had to think on their feet in order to survive. As soon as they started the factory up, they ran into deep trouble because there were no vehicles to bring the raw materials to the production line. But they thought, hang on, we're a car factory. We've got engines, we've got wheels, we've got tyres. We'll build something. And they came up with this. The Plattenwagen. Now, before you snigger, let me tell you, this bodge-up was still being used around the factory until a few months ago. Bigger problems arose, however, when production was threatened by a total lack of carburettors. My answer to that was, well, let's have a look at a carburettor. We took one to pieces on my own desk and made two heaps of parts, the, 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 the die-cast parts. I said, we'll make those in the new foundry we'd had to open, uh, in the light alloy foundry. And the other bits, he said, we cannot manufacture those. I said, no, but they're small detail parts. There are two camera firms down in Brunswick nearby who could very well make those. And they also chucked out the old Nazi logo and knocked up the current VW symbol over a few cups of tea. The British stayed in charge for four years, and in that time, a strong bond of mutual respect was forged between them and their former wartime enemies. By March 1946, the thousandth Beetle came off the assembly line. I think it was a good car. It stood out ahead of uh, many cars that were on the road at the time. The cars that uh, 
We produced it the other day for British medics and the French armies were uh, rather basic, limited by availability of materials, of course. The seats were uh, rather bare cloth, something like army blanket. I also hear that there were some peculiar smells coming from them. There were two peculiar smells, one leaking oil cooler, it reeked of uh, oil occasionally, but the worst was when it rained, the car reeked of fish. Uh, the adhesive used to fix the trim to the steel bodywork turned out to be a fish glue, all that was available at the time. The way that Volkswagen sold their cars and the superb dealer network that they set up with very good after-sales service, spares, uh, manuals and so on, is all very much derived from the British Army philosophy. Uh, it's not something that the German motor industry did before the war, and when the British introduced it, it was very alien to them. They soon realised that it was actually a very sensible way to sell cars, and they adapted it and developed it, and that was one of the reasons why Volkswagen became so successful in the 19, late 1940s, 1950s. By 1947, the Allied requirement had, by and large, been satisfied. So cars came available for the German economy, for export. Then the currency was reformed. The German economy just took off overnight. It was like flowers growing in the, in the desert after a rainstorm. It was clear that the Volkswagen was going to play its part on the world scene. I remember talking about this to my chief, Colonel Charles Ratliff. And um, it was he uh, who said, I think we've got a a world beater here, it's another Model T. And we regarded it as, a, uh, as an incentive to British industry to do better. Did you get the feeling in the middle of all this that you were actually shaping car history? For me, speaking personally, I was there for four years uh, doing a job. Uh, I had done a job before and I'd done jobs since. To me, it's just part of life. I don't feel uh, that I am in any way Mr. Volkswagen. Ivanhurst's a terribly modest man. I think he underplays his role there. One only has to talk to the people that were in the workforce of the time to realise just the regard that they hold him. I think it's fair to say that if the British Army officers hadn't been sent to Wolfsburg, uh, and run the factory, there would have been no Volkswagen company survived the war and the Beetle would never have been built. 